In this video, we're going to discuss sets and hash sets in the Java Collection Framework, and we're going to consider how to implement intersection, difference, and union with a set and hash set. So first, a few classes. Set is an interface which essentially is just a list of methods. A set, by definition, should not have any duplicate elements. Now, a hash set is one of the implementations of this set interface. A few things about the hash set. It's guaranteed to have constant performance or O1 performance if you're using any of the normal operations of add or remove or anything like that. And that's because it's based on the hash map. The hash map is something that's based on hash codes, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But nonetheless, this is a really efficient way of having a collection where you can add to it quickly or remove to it from it quickly, regardless of how big the collection is. Now, iterating over the collection, uh, that's going to be dependent on the size of the collection, but adds and removes are very efficient. Now, a hash map will allow one null value, therefore a hash set will also allow one null value. Some methods that we want to know. First of all, the methods, these methods are available on all Java objects because they are defined in the great grandfather, grandmother class, java.lang.object. One of them is called hash code. Hash code will return an integer that is relatively unique, but not guaranteed to be unique. One of my favorite real life examples of this is the hash code method that is overridden on the class called string. And you see it, it tells us how it works. It takes the first character, multiplies it by 31, which happens to be a prime number, to the power of the length of, of the string minus one for the first character, length of the string minus two for the second, and so on and so forth. A fairly complicated formula, but it just ends up that this is a really good formula to get a hash code for a string. Now, if I lost you on any of that, don't worry. The rest of the video will get a little bit simpler. So we don't need to know the details. We just need to know that it's going to return a relatively unique, but not guaranteed to be unique, integer. In one Java process, an object should return the same hash code all the time, provided that that object's state never changes. Two equal objects, or two objects with the same data inside, should return the same hash code as well. Now, this hash code, because it comes up with a number, ends up being a really easy way to find an address for an object compared to other objects in something like a hash set collection. So imagine that the total number, the total range of hash codes that we could create falls between 1 and 100. The computational formula for a hash code is going to be the same regardless of the number of items that are in this collection, in this hash map collection, because the hash code is based on the object that's being stored, not based on the hash map that is storing it. So coming up with this number essentially has constant performance. Once we come up with that number, we simply divide by the number of buckets that are represented by a hash map, and then we can find the exact bucket where this object needs to be stored. Now I'm simplifying things a little bit, but nonetheless, the idea is that this hash code is an easy way to find an address where we can store this object. Now, occasionally you will have two different objects that generate the same hash code. And in that case, the hash map is going to step down and look at the equals method between the two to see if they're the same or not. That is an extra step, so it is going to add a bit more time. So it's a good idea to have this hash code return something relatively unique. Now let's consider some terms we learned back in our math class back in junior high or high school. Union, intersection, and difference. These terms assume we are dealing with two different sets and we're looking at the relationship of objects within these sets. So I have two sets here represented by circles. And you notice that the entire unit is colored in blue, which indicates that this is a union. Or in other words, it's, what, it's all of the information in all of these sets. So that's a union. Intersection is only what they have in common. Difference we can look at two ways. Difference could be the union minus the intersection, or we could look at it just one way where we have one set and we subtract out the intersection to come up with the difference. Now, this is nice because it's a very fast way to determine the state of something, and that becomes an easy way for us to create a dashboard. So let's consider this example, which is an example I'll show in code in a few moments. But nonetheless, we essentially have a few different microservices working together here. We have a plant diary application that I've been building up, something where we can upload photos and the like. 
Uh, then we have an image resizer. Image resizing tends to take some time. So this is a great microservice to spawn off separately from our plant diary and even scale up by having it automatically add new instances as needed. Because the image resizer just takes a picture in, resizes it, and then essentially it's done. Now on the right side we have a dashboard which says, okay, how many photos have we resized, uh, what state are they in, so on and so forth. Now, as is common with microservices, we have three separate applications, although I will confess the dashboard I currently have integrated to the plant diary, but don't worry about that. That's just a technical detail. But nonetheless, three separate applications, and they're connected together by the concept of topics, or could also be queues. In our case, and the example I'll show in a moment, we're using topics that are served by Kafka, but nonetheless, a topic. Uh, a topic means we can add something to it, and multiple programs or multiple processes can subscribe to this topic and can be notified when something is added to the topic. So we start by uploading an image to the plant diary application a, and maybe an image of a plant specimen. So the plant diary application is going to take this image information and it's going to add that to our in topic. Now, because it's a topic, it can have multiple subscribers. Our dashboard subscribes to it and the image resizer program also subscribes to it. So we see that our dashboard is going to get a reference to this object and it's going to go, it's going to put it in a set that we're gonna call in. So these are things that have been seen by the in topic. Now separately, the image resizer also subscribes to this in topic and it also gets a copy of this object. So it does its resizing, which might take a few moments. When it's finished, it essentially confirms that the resize is complete by publishing this object on the out topic. Now guess what? Because it's a topic, we can have multiple subscribers again, and one of the subscribers is our dashboard. So this object now goes to our out set as well. And remember that in a set, items have to be unique. So it goes to the out set. But hang tight just a moment. You notice we have the exact same object in the inset as we have in the outset. So these objects should not be in the difference area, but they should be married up together in the intersection instead. And therefore, we can tell that items that are in that intersection have been processed because they've been seen by the inset and they've been seen by the outset. So uh, difference has been sent for processing. Difference looking at the inset side means it's been sent for processing but not processed. Intersection means it's been processed successfully. Difference looking at the outset side means it's been processed but it came in through another source. In our example, that's not possible because the only source of data to the photo resizer at this point is the plant diary, but theoretically we could have other things that need photos resized as well. Nothing says it has to be a plant photo. Now the union of all these together is all items, both those that are processed and those that are not processed. Some methods that are handy to use with the Java Collections framework and with the set interface that make this easy. Set1.addAll set2 means that set1 becomes the union of set1 and set2. Set1 retain all set2 means that set1 becomes the intersection of set1 and set2. Set1 remove all set2 means that set1 becomes the difference of set1 minus the intersection of set1 and set2. Now, a best practice here is that you're actually changing set1 in this case. So many times you want that set1 to be a temporary set if you just want to look at a union or an intersection of two sets. Let's say that we actually want to compare set0 and set2. What we might want to do is create this temporary set1 and I'm indicating here that it contains strings, but it could contain other things. Uh, and we create this temporary set one by passing, passing set zero into the constructor call for our hash set object. What that means is that set one is going to be a copy of the items in set zero. Set zero will not change. Even as we perform these operations on set one, set zero still has all of the original members. So it's important to consider doing that if you don't actually want to lose what's in set one. So we've covered quite a bit in this video what a set is, what a hash set is, how that math works, and how we can build a dashboard by listening to some topics and considering this math that occurs 
when we do difference, intersection, and union. I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.